Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to introduce first the person who has brought us all together here today to mark this a true turning point for education. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to His Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. Excellencies, dear young people, teachers, parents, and partners. Throughout my life, education has been my guide and touchstone. I regard myself as a lifelong student, and I've done great inspiration from my work as a teacher many decades ago. Without education, where would I be? What and where? would any of us be. Every single person in this room knows education transforms lives, economies, and societies. But we also know we must transform education because education is in a deep crisis. Instead of being the great enabler, education is fast becoming a great divider. Some 70% of 10-year-olds in poor countries are unable to read the basic text. Either they are out of school or in school but barely learning. Even in developed countries, education systems often entrench rather than reduce inequality, reproducing it across generations. The rich have access to the best resources, schools and universities, leading to the best jobs, while the poor, especially girls, face huge obstacles to getting the qualifications that could change their lives. Displaced people and students with disabilities face the highest obstacles of all. The COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on learning worldwide and dealt a hammer blow to progress on SDG 4. But the education crisis began long before and runs much deeper. The report card from the International Commission on the Future of Education put it clearly. Education systems don't make the grade. They are failing students and societies and favoring growth learning and competition for grades. Too often, curricula are outdated and narrow. Education systems take little account of lifelong learning and teachers are undertrained, undervalued, and underpaid. The digital divide penalizes poor students, and the education financing gap yawns wider than never. We will not end this crisis by simply doing more of the same, faster, or better. Now is the time to transform education systems. So, dear world leaders, your people, the world's young people and future generations are calling on you to act with vision and purpose. A new vision for education in the 21st century is taking shape. Above all, quality education must support the development of individual learners throughout his or her life. And it must help people learn how to learn with a focus on problem solving and collaboration. It must provide the foundations for learning from reading, writing, and mathematics to scientific, digital, social, and emotional skills. It must also develop students' capacity to adapt to the rapidly changing world of work. And it must be accessible to all from the earliest stages and throughout their lives. And it must help us learn to live and work together and to understand ourselves and our responsibilities to each other and to our planet. At a time of rampant misinformation, climate denial, and attacks on human rights, we need education systems that distinguish fact from conspiracy, instill respect for science, and celebrate humanity in all its diversity. Excellencies, excellencies to move from this vision to reality, allow me to highlight five areas for our attention and commitment. 
First, we must protect the right to quality education for everyone, especially girls, everywhere. School must be open to all without discrimination. We must recover the years of education lost around the world because of the pandemic. Quality education for all means tackling the crisis in foundational learning and ensuring it is lifelong, and placing a greater focus on education in crisis hotspots. From this platform, I appeal to the authorities in Afghanistan, lift all restrictions on girls' access to secondary education immediately. Girls' education is among the most important steps to deliver peace, security, and sustainable development everywhere. Second, teachers are the lifeblood of education systems. We need a new focus on their roles and skill sets. Today's teachers need to be facilitators in the classroom, promoting learning rather than merely transmitting answers. We also need to tackle the global shortage of teachers and look at increasing their quality by raising their status and ensuring they have decent working conditions and continuous training and learning opportunities and receive the adequate salaries. Third, school must become safe, healthy space with no place for violence, stigma or intimidation. Education systems should promote the physical and mental health of all students, including their sexual and reproductive health. Excellent. Excellences. Fourth, the digital revolution must be of benefit to all school children. I ask states to ensure that students and teaching establishments be better connected. In this regard, our GIGA initiative aims at putting all schools online. But connectivity in itself will not be enough to provide an education. I encourage governments and teachers to work with partners in the private sector to develop digital educational content of a high quality for everyone. Fifth, the question of financing. None of this will be possible without an increase in funding for education and without a surge in global solidarity against inequality. In these difficult times, I call upon all countries to protect the budgets for education and to ensure that their expenditure in this area is translated into a progressive increase in resources per student and by better academic results. Educational funding must be the number one priority of governments. It is the best investment that a country can make in its population and in its future. And the international community has a crucial role to play. I would ask our development partners to cancel the reductions in aid and to devote at least 15% of public development aid to education. The international financial institutions must provide resources to developing countries and allow them budgetary flexibility so that they are able to invest. Their disbursements and their advice must correspond to the goal of ensuring quality education for everyone, girls and boys. I also invite the international financial institutions to benefit from the International Finance Facility for Education. This tool aims to mobilize $10 billion to help around 700 million children living in lower middle income countries to receive a quality education. Dear friends, the Transforming Education Summit can only achieve its global goals by creating a global movement. Governments, young people, civil society, teachers, corporate leaders and donors are becoming mobilized. The United Nations is pooling all its strengths thanks to the action of UNESCO, UNICEF and United Nations teams present on the ground. Let us move forward together so that everyone can learn, can blossom and dream throughout their lives. 
Let us ensure that the students of today and future generations will be able to access the education that they need in order to create a more sustainable and more inclusive, just and peaceful world for everyone, for girls and boys. I thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Thank you, Secretary General, for your powerful message. Another round of applause, please, for the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres.